This is Sexy Funny Raw, the podcast with me, adult film star and comedian Sylvia Sage, here to discuss what you've only dared to ask Google. Undress, unzip, and unwind. The party starts now. Hello, people, and welcome back to another episode of Sexy Funny funny raw with myself sylvia sage and i've got my special guest co-host in the studio today mr josh sabera <gasps> da, da, da. Thanks, <laughs> uh you are a oh my god i don't even know what uh, uh, what ways to put you uh, a writer uh my writer of my new favorite book porn again Thank um you. that i am so close to finishing and he's telling me that it's like the last like few chapters are the best chapters and I'm like oh, it gets so good it's so well I'm the so last good. one's the best one okay the last the one is the best one is, I mean it's a compelling chapter but it's not a pleasant chapter this is a best selling memoir Correct. that you have written that is currently being developed for TV yes so amazing this is the first of you have written two books now and are currently right. writing your third, third book yes very impressive you yes. have been working since you were high school level getting into um, publication and working yeah. in television as an and intern, as yeah. an intern and mm -hmm. just working your way up when everybody else was drinking and partying and making bad yeah. decisions you I were was making working on a soap opera <laughs> hardcore really good decisions <laughs> then my for life. life became a soap opera it was sort of setting the stage yeah it's yeah. so very impressive um, you worked as a TV personality producer marketing executive you um, appeared regularly on um, the Ricky Lake show um, where you were also the lead producer you have frequent on-air contributing to um, CNN mm -hmm. as well as being the executive producer executive producer of the hit lifetime um, film the 11th victim mm -hmm. you've worked for the Hallmark Channel you um, executive produced on the popular Haley Dean mystery series mm -hmm. with new episodes slated to air in 2021 yeah. you are just so impressive with publications from A&E lifetime I mean, you've been all over the place. Yeah. You are like a Hollywood elite. Well, I mean, I think that's I think that's you doing PR for me. I'm just saying. But um, right now, I know I'm what presence I'm right in. Right now, I'm focusing on the writing. So okay. for me, I mean, I, you know, and I'm very proud of the Hallmark series that's yeah. still running, and I love it. And Nancy Grace and I uh, produced that together. Oh, how cool! So it has like that true crime element to it, um, but. Uh, yeah, my my I'm sort of been focusing on the writing. So the second book came out a, uh, about a year ago, and now uh, I'm working on book three. So impressive! I am highly impressed by you as Thank much you. as I am highly impressed with our guest I for today. I know how exciting is this? I know <laughs> she's one of my all-time favorite people, and my definitely my favorite person to work for in pornography, Jackie St. James, ladies and gentlemen. Just Yay. a big round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> She is Oh, I love that I got the big I round of applause. Got the applause. It's like a stadium. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we could take that away. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord giveth and he snatched back. <laughs> Jackie is a multiple award winning writer and director in the adult entertainment industry, an avid feminist. She is known for creating a wide range of scripted, erotic content and romantic comedies. Uh, to edgier all sex releases mm -hmm. throughout her career as an adult in adult as an adult also as an adult <laughs> when she was when she was directing porn as a child it was very right, different it was different it was different place <laughs> yeah um, uh, she's really evolved her work's really come a long way <laughs> uh, thank you Jackie has been an advocate for a couple or a couples oriented pornography and has been a guest speaker at the US um, at the UC Santa Barbara and UCLA she has also been featured in several popular mainstream publications including the Huffington Post um, Jezebel slate and more um, salon.com referred to her as the woman who conquered porn uh, I would say that as well. No, That's I do. Impressive. I do think that, and I will tell you, as a performer, being on Jackie sets, there's no one who makes you feel more comfortable, more at home, 
more, I feel like I can say anything to you. And I've said some crazy things to Jackie when I've had to pull her to the side because uh, we've had some. <laughs> we've had really bad luck. Very interesting experiences together. <laughs> but Wait, can you give me an example of what, oh, some, what a sidebar would be <laughs> on a porn set? Uh, what was a, okay, so one instance in particular where. Um, <laughs> which one are you going to go? I know. With? I was like, which one do I want to like, go to? Hmm. I'm going to go <laughs> to the. Um, fake pop oh boy okay Fuck. so yeah so we um maybe i shouldn't go to that story because it might make this person look we won't say who they are they don't know who they are yeah yeah okay so uh she had said to me prior like sometimes this person has trouble um popping that's their finishing load the money shot um so we'll just fake a pop and we'll fake them inside of you <clears throat> i was like great yeah let's do it and he heard like I don't know what he heard because I don't think he heard fake pop. I think he just no, heard, oh, he heard I cream pie. Yeah, but I had told him before it happened. I said, okay, we're going to fake it. So yeah. I just need you to act like you ejaculate and then we'll get a close up of the pop inside her pussy. <laughs> This sounds like a normal. He work didn't day. hear that. He didn't hear fake pop, and he just like no. went with it. He actually came. Yeah, and this is what's crazy. The fact that he did come is what's crazy. Like, Sylvia has a magic So the whole conversation was about that it wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Right, because he doesn't usually. So the fact that he did, I was yeah. like, well, bravo to Sylvia. But now we're in a different situation. So now we're in a situation happens? of, like, like, like I've got to go get a plan B. Because I'm on birth control, but I do right. not take any chances. No chances I am not right. having a porn baby. I am not going to be that girl. Like, it's just <laughs> not going to happen for me. Oh. I'm not going to be the girl who calls the last ten people I had sex with and been like, well, it's in this t window. <laughs> so <laughs> I've had to be that girl for getting gonorrhea before, and those are not fun calls right. that you want to make. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah. Um, no, but Jackie makes it – we just talk about it, and we just yeah. make it real and exactly what it is. And I think the other time, like, my vagina, I think I had, like, a smell or an odor to it, and I was like, Jackie, oh. I am not about to have vaginal sex in this room and everyone's going to smell my vagina right now. And I was like, can we just do anal? Can we just put it in my butt? There was a safer bet there was going to be less smell from my ass than there was from my vagina. Okay, but here's my question then. And Jackie did makes you, me not feel bad you do about it. it right. Did you do it for the same rate? Yeah, because I did. Because that's not her fault. No, it was my fault. <laughs> it was my fault, and I did it do for the same your, race. Your smelly yeah. vagina ain't on Jackie. Yeah. Well, considering that so many things have gone wrong <laughs> when Sylvia's on my sets, that maybe I am just like bad luck for her. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Well, but at least, I feel listen, she got good content at a discount. Really, that's at the right. end of the day. Did we even do it? No, I don't think did, we did. We did it vaginal. It wasn't a yeah, problem. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it was just a freak out that yeah. she might have had okay. in the moment. Yeah, yeah, okay. it was, and it was fine for the movie. But yeah. Yeah, but well, that's you know, the, the thing. movie's not in smell a vision. But I feel more comfortable going to Jackie than I do. I wouldn't be able to say to another male producer, hey, I think my vagina smells bad. Can we stick it in my butt? Like, I don't. And they probably would make you just do vag anyway. Right, I mean, right. But it's like that. It's like I don't feel comfortable <laughs> having those conversations with everybody. Jackie makes it so easy. And there's like never any, I never feel animosity on your sets. They're always very happy and it's like a place you want to be. When they only need me for half a day and I'm not the lead in the movie, I'm like, oh, I have to go home now. <laughs> and everybody else is going to be here having a great time without well, me. Well, you can stay. I mean, I've actually visited a couple of Jackie sets. Have you? Yes, as somebody who's not in the adult business, yeah. um, there have been a couple of instances where oh, there have been reasons for me to be there. What? And, um, yeah. and some to, bad things. And happen. there have been a few interesting things that I learned. Can you elaborate? Um, what was... Um, well, probably the time you brought your friend would be the more interesting of the two days, I would imagine, right? Wait, yeah, I did a bring a friend who was visiting mm -hmm. from another country and wanted to... See, she had never been in L.A. before, and she said, I want to see everything from Disney to porn. And I said, I can actually well, deliver on both. I can make that both. happen. <laughs> um, I said, I'm not sure we can do them on the same time <laughs> at the same day. Um, but yeah, I mean, there were days where... You know, you see the things that I see Jackie's having to deal with in terms of, you know, keeping all of the personalities because yeah. you're dealing with, you know, a cast of eight people at for a movie. Minimum. You know, yeah, in, minimum. in a very short period of time. <clears throat> yeah. And you have the personalities of the crew and you have, you mm. know, there's so much to sort of be juggling at the same time. It's sort of, it's very impressive actually. Yeah. And 
it's sort of like when I worked in, uh, when I interned, what we were saying about soaps earlier, and people are the first to make fun of daytime TV because mm-hmm. they're like, ah, you know, it's silly, it's whatever. <laughs> if anybody knew how much went work yeah. goes into creating an hour of television a day, mm-hmm. you have a whole different respect. I can't tell you how my entire mindset changed <laughs> after having been on a set with Jackie and her level of professionalism. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and how... A lot of work and content has to be done in such a short period of time. Yeah. It's it is it it was mind blowing. I thought. Yeah. Like I was, I was very impressed. By it. Was Sean with you when he came to yes. your sets? Yeah, he's yes. pretty much Sean's with me all the time. Yeah, now, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's nice to have him there because he does keep things on track and he like does. keeps everybody moving yeah. at some sort of like fast rate. Because mm-hmm. you do, it is like herding cats on a porn set because oh yeah, everybody has all involved in their own self and their own things that they're doing and making videos or whatever they're doing whether it be outside smoking or whatever (laughs) it's hard to wrangle everybody and get them there and get them to be on their lines and have like everything ready to go although I will say that normally I don't have those problems like uh, unless it's I'm told who I'm supposed to cast and I was gonna say he was on a both times you came to set I didn't cast those people Ah. so like normally if it's like if I'm using you Mm -hmm. and I don't cast difficult people because frankly I can't fucking deal with it like it just drives me to insanity because stuff always goes wrong even and it's better it go wrong with somebody you really like yeah but I don't understand like somebody when somebody is a difficult performer or difficult uh, to work with I, I just don't understand where they see or do they not realize that they're difficult or they just don't see the value in being a team player because who does want to work with somebody but the thing is that our business doesn't hold people accountable and I think that that a lot of especially female performers will be like hey I'm not getting a lot of work but yet you guys are hiring the girls that are an hour late difficult Mm -hmm. but like I won't rehire those people Mm -hmm. but every other studio does they don't care that some girl showed up two hours late and held up the crew that was there on time Mm -hmm. see you're see and you're much nicer and more diplomatic about it than I would be because if I functioned the way I used to have to function when I was in the workplace I'd be like, oh, you're not, bye. But and you have to, because you have to get the content done. Yeah. You have to deliver the movie on time, right. so well, you don't always have the choice. And you have to think that some of these people have such big followings that yeah. that's why they're Correct. there, you know, and you almost can't get rid of them, even if they're like a horrible creature. You're like, oh, oh but they also they have, have millions of yeah, followers. Yeah, two million followers on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, yeah, I could replace her with a girl that has 20,000, but mm-hmm. it's not going to do the movie. Sur- yeah. But how much do you, do you, you know, because I always feel like with mainstream films, nobody has really been able to quantify for me exactly how, like, what the increase is. Like, how many more butts and chairs does mm-hmm. does social media put? So what I'm curious about <laughs> is, is how much of an impact do you think it actually has on the the adult content that a people lot. consume. I do it too. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's for me like a lot of, of my favorites don't necessarily have like the three million followers. But what I'll often do me. is I'll, I'll ca- <laughs> yeah, I mean, but right, I mean, but I love Sylvia. I'll put her in everything if I could. So it's like I'll put Sylvia in there, and then I'll put somebody who has two million followers yeah. as like a small role, but they'll still promote. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's always discussions on that because Sylvia is a favorite of my studio but then you also have to think okay we have to get you you have a healthy she does she does oh yeah yeah, I mean it's not piddly but I'm just saying there's some girls that have three or four million some that Mm -hmm. are like we'll talk about this later but there was somebody that I couldn't believe had a million and she's not even like well known in our business Mm -hmm. but she is a porn performer Hmm. I was like oh but also isn't there a um, and you guys would know this but isn't there um, one of the appeals I think of of porn for people is the variety you know people like to see somebody new somebody different so like at what yeah, point do you start grooming then the crop of the people who are coming up to build their I mean somebody's got to be the next person but I think in Jackie's films <laughs> it's not now correct yeah. me if I'm wrong in Jackie's films it's not like that because Jackie's making productions she's not making the the amateur style porn where right, I think they, where is where they want to see right. the new girls got it they want they want the fresh face 18 year olds in the mm-hmm. couching the casting couches not right. necessarily in the feature films right you know? right right because yeah, so they are looking are bigger, for yeah and Jackie's looking for more which I love the more acting chops of it because I yeah. think it's fun to have these awesome scripts that we get to read out and some of them get really serious I mean we've yeah. had some we've had some a few good ones really yeah. interesting <laughs> scripts especially we've had some murders happen I mean like they get real you know yeah they well get, I know she puts <clears throat> a lot of work into the into yeah. the writing so. yeah. yeah no I really appreciate 
appreciate it. It makes it makes her the favorite person of mine to work for. Like this is why this is my favorite episode. Like, Yay, yeah, thanks. Absolutely. Thanks, like I said, our producer is super sad he can't be here. He Aww. wants to say what a big fan he is of yours and of Josh's. So well, he is him. he's on a cruise right now. I'm sure getting boozed up, but yeah. uh, <laughs> but Poor boy. also missing that he's not here. So hopefully we'll make it up to him when yeah. he gets back. Absolutely. I don't even know this, Jackie. How did you initially get into porn? Oh, God. Um, so I watched porn since I was 18, back when you would have to go into the video store and yeah. behind the curtain. And so I was a very um, open porn watcher with my guy friends. Okay. Uh, back then, women didn't really even talk about masturbation. No. Um, so throughout the years, like my guy friends would mail me porn or eventually when tube sites came, they'd send me links. Mm -hmm. And so one of my guy friends who's actually a camera guy for some TV shows, I won't talk about which ones, but <laughs> he sent me a link to a clip and he's like, you're not going to believe that this is porn. And it was shot very well for porn. The acting was good for porn. The women were pretty, but the guys were hot. Mm -hmm. And normally, you know, it's ugly Gross. guys. Yeah. So I Googled the company and they were doing a screenwriting contest for the romance series, basically. Mm. Of their, so I saw, oh, I'll write a porn. But I was terrified. So I Googled one of the directors, tweeted at him. He hit me back. And um, we talked, and he told me, like, how to write a porn script. And he gave me the best advice. It wasn't, like, what you would think. He said, um, write a story that has sex. Yeah. And, and it was really good advice because, you know, you always think it's going to be that tongue-in-cheek, you know, the repairman comes mm -hmm. over or right. something. The and pizza delivery the pizza, boy. Right, right, exactly. All the tropes and all right. the things that you hear about. And so I was like, ah, and I took it to heart. I wrote the script. I sent it in and I won. And mind you, this is no big accomplishment because I've read the shit that comes in. It's like the worst crap you've ever seen. But it changed my life yeah. because after that I wrote more and then eventually the owner of the studio was like, I want to see how you do directing. And wow. then and you had never directed before, had you? No, but I mean, I, I was trying to be an actor, so I had taken okay. uh, directing classes in college, and okay. then I had been trained as an actor for like 25 years. Oh, nice. The worst actor you'll ever see, but I do have training, okay? <laughs> I do. Yeah. I don't think you could possibly, I've seen you seem calm under situations <laughs> that I know. I think I've gotten <laughs> better since I've moved behind the camera and care less, so maybe I'd be a better actor Maybe today. you're less conscious of it, yeah. and then it would make it more natural. For sure, yeah, for sure. Do you think it was harder for you to break into the creative side of porn being a woman? Do you feel like, or that was easier for you? You felt like you had more, instead of like a, no offense, but a man's like, I just gotta fuck, I just gotta put my dick in something. Do you feel like for you it was easier to create the wilder stories? Oh, I mean, I think people are certainly more forgiving of the women that are doing the more graphic, crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. But in terms of just breaking in, no, I think I came at the right time because porn for women was starting to blow up and it was a big deal and it was getting a lot of traction in mainstream media. So for mm -hmm. me, it felt so easy. Whereas I see a lot of guys struggling to get jobs directing or whatever in porn or even acting in porn. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, it felt very easy. Like a lot came really fast for me. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. What do you think about your personality makes you so good at what you do? What is like your personality trait that plays the most into? I mean, okay, I don't believe in signs, but I'll just say this, I'm a Libra, and I do think that I have a lot of those qualities and that I tend to be able to get along with almost everyone. And I tend to know when to pick fights and when not to. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I know how to push the right people. Like, I'll be a raging cunt to certain people, like a Bella Danger. I'll be a complete bitch to her because I know she can take it. And there's certain people I know I have to kind of, you Coddle. know, yeah, breastfeed them mm -hmm. because they're just so sensitive. Yeah. Right. So it's sort of like knowing who and <laughs> how. Knowing the personality. Correct. Right. Yeah. yeah. Bella always seems so funny to me. On Ugh. I find her, I, I love <laughs> following her on Twitter because I just find the things that I just find her so funny. Yeah. Like, and I love that sensibility that sort of like, no. No sensibility. <laughs> like she's like, I'm, you know, I whatever. Love her. And I appreciate that sort of authenticity. Yeah. So I, I always, I enjoy her. I, yeah. I love that. Do you ever feel like there's a weird balance between being a feminist and writing porn? Uh, no, because I think that, um, you know, women are sexual people. We have sexual desires and we should be able to talk about sex and work in porn. And yes. I'm not exploiting women. And women are more than capable of deciding whether they want to be fucked on camera. 
Yes, I agree don't, with that. Don't treat us like, you know, you always hear the 18-year-old girl mm -hmm. and they they feel bad for her, but you never hear them talking about the 18-year-old guy that joined porn. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, so basically you think women aren't capable, capable. of deciding that they want to do this. Now, maybe it's not a good decision for that 18-year-old, but mm -hmm. that's her own decision that she'll have to live with and ultimately figure out. Right. Um, but we shouldn't act like a woman can't make the decision. Yeah. No, I agree with that 100%. So. I love that response. Thank you, Jackie. Of course. Um, what is the creative process like when you're writing a porn script? What it, you said that you were told to write a movie, right? And mm -hmm. this includes sex in it. So that's mm -hmm. that's what you're doing. You're just thinking of like, because I know we do a lot of like office scenarios and how many times you've been in an office where you wanted to sleep with the boss or, yes. you know, vice versa or whatever mm -hmm. that would be. That that's how you're that's how you're thinking about it, or what are you um, going into? No, I mean they'll give me a genre. So for example, um, the movie that you're going to be doing with me in two Next weeks, week. or not? Yeah, not this coming week, but the following. following. Yeah. Um, that sounds like I, you know my parents are going to be in town. Are they Maybe really? will come by. Oh, oh my God. God. I would, would like love to meet, to meet your parents. parents. That would be amazing. Yeah. Yes. You're welcome to. And we could, my dad might be able to, you know, tell you how to avoid a UTI. I would love as, to hear that. Oh, because I get this is great. Might all the time. be able to tell you positions that would lessen your I would love likelihood to know of getting. Things. Yes. Also, because I do have positions that are super painful also. Well, you know, there oh, are yeah, certain I things agree. that do make you more prone to getting, what, you know, things. What, yeah, like, well, like. I mean, I am not. I am not right. qualified to myself You're give done. that advice. What's but the painful position for you? I'm just curious. Well, it's it doesn't necessarily have to be the position. It's like a certain size of a man. If he oh. goes like too mm -hmm. hard, I will. I don't even notice it when it's happening during sex. But when I come off of him, then I'm in like, I can't move. I'm in so much pain. Hmm. It's happened on porn sets several times. It's happened on my personal life a few times where I literally in there like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I can't even talk to you because I'm hmm. in debilitating pain and I just hmm. have to usually sit on a toilet and I can't pee, I can't do anything, but I just have to sit for like 20, 30 minutes before my body like releases and like lets me like breathe again. But it's like just something that just gets moved inside. I don't know what it is, but it's really, really painful. And it happens on a, like a pretty regular basis. So I would love to know certain That's things. That's not like a clamping feeling right where it like it clamp. makes is it, it burning no it's not burning it's just like a lot of really maybe it is a clamping uh, now i have to pay attention to like what i'm really i mean feeling. i i am t literally talking out of my ass right What's now but clamping? there's things like that like a tightening like vaginismus which is actually a clinical issue see i don't know it may or may not be that i don't know i mean that's now i do want to talk to your dad bring your dad in. bring your dad yeah because yeah. she's with me two days back to yeah. back yeah. so well, maybe we'll come i think maybe <laughs> but um, that was an easy, that was low hanging fruit. <laughs> um, but um, we um, maybe we will. We'll come. You'll. I mean, how much fun is that? I'll bring my seventy five year old That's, parents. I would love it. love it. No, they'll love it. Yeah. And I'm gonna. To... I'm gonna. Pr I have so many questions for your dad now because these are the things. These like this whole show for is sure. about. Like, mm -hmm. I want to talk about all the things that you only ask Google that you're only afraid. Like, mm -hmm. I have never even talked about this. Mm -hmm. until right now with you guys like but these are things that people need to to yeah. hear about and discuss this is the kind yes. of stuff that people <clears throat> think they're going through alone mm -hmm. and they're not 100 percent. and that's why these conversations are important yeah oh definitely you know? and you know to have somebody who's so genuine and open to talking about it i think is great and especially since I think a lot of people think that porn sex is is how you should be like young kids right. how you should be actually having sex when it's like yeah. no please do not have that kind of right. sex yeah. in your personal life but they don't right it's like the don't try this at home disclaimer please. yeah <laughs> it's also fake yeah yeah I always tell people like because I mean I don't do a lot of those scenes because I don't I don't work for a lot of those companies right, right. exactly but it's like the deep throating stuff now I I will do it if they're paying a great amount but I don't do it for a regular amount just because it's super painful and it I it's a personal preference now I don't think that everyone has the same feeling that I do but for me it's degrading I don't like you having full control of my head and my comfort level if I'm giving a blowjob I think that's a gift and I want to give the blowjob at my speed and at my recommendation and how I'm now I'm going to ask how you want your you know your balls 
you know, touched and I'm going to ask it what rate is good to you. But also I don't like being forced into anything. And mm -hmm. I feel like a forced blow job is like, I always tell people like, if that were real life, I will bite down. Like yeah. I will literally bite your <laughs> cock because I don't like it. Don't do right. that if to me. If it's not your thing, it's not your Yeah. Thing. And now I say it's different for all people. Yes. Like, Jackie just got a movie idea. I think. Yeah. It's like, it's like cock biters too. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie would never do a movie where someone's holding my head down forcefully no, ever. No, not, no ever. well that's, that's one of the things that I think when you mentioned about Jackie's sort of feminist perspective, you know, from the movies of Jackie's that I've seen, and obviously I don't watch them recreationally because <laughs> they're not exactly my my cup of tea. But I have been on the sets and I have seen the movies. And one of the things that I think is sort of such a special thing about her sensibility is that she does come from a perspective of how a woman would want to be treated. Yeah. And that a woman is empowered to yes. decide that that is the kind of sex that she would want to have yeah. as opposed to a lot of what you see and what people expect to see in porn mm -hmm. which is sort of from the male gaze. Mm -hmm. 100%. And so it's really sort of a um, I think it's like a refreshing thing mm -hmm. to see things where women are in control and, and empowered. Yeah. And still, they're still hot. I always feel that. I always feel that my role is very empowering, even though I'm usually mean in Jackie's face. I'm fine. Why you won't be this is? week. You will not be. Am I that, nice? In the both movies, you won't be. You'll oh, be nice in both. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. I mean, you're cheating on your husband, but you're not a bad person. <laughs> Now, why do you think this is? I want to go into the psychology of this casting. I honestly think it's probably being a brunette. I think, no. No, no, I don't, I don't even think about do people's no? hair color. No. Oh, okay. I, I think I give the harder stuff to people okay. that I know can handle it. And Got Sylvia it. can, like... The performance part, the yeah, acting part, That's right? what I think about, yeah. Okay. Good to know, because yeah. I'm like, am I just a villain always? No. no. You know what? When the villain is always the best role to have, they yeah. always have better clothes. Yeah. If you look on any TV show, whatever, the villains are always dressed better than everyone else. They it's look a, it's better. A, they, they, their hair has better. So I'm telling you, it's the way to go in, in filmed entertainment. Always be the bitch or the villain. Yeah, I agree. No, I love those roles. I'm not gonna. I mean, say I good. play that in real life. <laughs> That's why I can't wait to read your next book. You, well, you'll like Enemies. Closer, that's why that's I'm like saying I want to read enemies closer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. That is that's my next book read, yeah. so it's on my list. What do you think the biggest obstacles on a porn set are, Jackie? Um, I'll see if I agree with you. Uh, well, the fact that you know, I was talking to somebody else about this recently. Is it's you know the drama that we deal with on set or personal issues. The difference is that in Hollywood, somebody has a personal issue, they can kind of suck it up and do the thing. But like in porn, you're getting fucked. At the end of the day, a penis is going to be inside you, or your dick's going to be in a vagina. At least on my sets. Yeah. Um. So in those scenarios, it, there's an intimacy that, you know, it glosses over the the personal side I mean or it crosses over so mm -hmm. meaning if you just broke up with your boyfriend and now you're going to be fucked by a 10 inch cock it's a lot more going on in your head and I don't think people yeah I don't think people are super sensitive so for me it's like constantly navigating the drama of people's personal lives mm -hmm. is one of my biggest challenges I had a woman in a car accident before she came mm -hmm. to my set and was like sobbing in the makeup chair oh god yeah you were on that movie oh god anyway but yeah so yeah wow. but she smoothed it over she because did. I didn't know so it all, <laughs> all worked out right it all worked out but I mean those sorts of things happen and you have to kind of deal with it. I think those would probably be the most difficult and also when I'm forced to cast people that I, I don't want to and then having to suck it up and be friendly to people that I absolutely cannot stand. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. Like who? No. <laughs> <You don't know. laughs> well, I'll just tell you this. Chances are if they haven't appeared more than twice in on one of my sets, yeah. it's because I I mean maybe it's that I'm not allowed to hire them, but it's probably that I just don't like them. Right. Yeah. Which is funny because you're such a um, like open, fun, accepting person. Like for you to sort of have that feeling towards someone, they they can't. It has to be a bad person. Yeah. yeah. You're really open about being in our industry. How do your friends and family and everyone react to it? I mean, my family doesn't support it, so I don't really talk to them okay. about it. I mean, when we talk, it's always about them and what they're doing. And um, you know, I, for it's funny because. Um, Normally, you know, that's like the the usually the first question people ask when they meet somebody that they don't know is, oh, what do you do? Yeah. And like, I can't be like, oh, I'm a pornographer because nine times out of ten, you're either the coolest person in the room and then you're like their little 
puppy that they can just play with and Mm -hmm. because you're more entertaining for them to know or you get the judgment so I just lie and say I do indie film because I I don't yeah I don't like to open that door I mean, it is and it's not. They're I mean, but independent then people, and they're films. Right. Okay. There we so, go. So. All right. So I guess I'm I being I mean, honest. that is accurate. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean. just, why, you know, most people I'm not going to be seeing more than one time if they're asking me that question. You know, so it's interesting. You and I have talked about this many times before because I Ugh. think there's this, there's this idea that, and, and you and I actually recently had, I think, in, in a previous show, we talked about this. Um that you know people see it people have this perception of what the adult industry is Mm -hmm. and uh, they have a perception based uh, based on whatever i don't know where they get these ideas but they have this perception of the people who work in the sex Mm -hmm. industry and you know they think it's fun they think it's fun to meet you they think it's an interesting party story but then they go out to dinner with friends and are they inviting you they're definitely not inviting you, but they're probably still talking about you. Correct. Well, and correct. to me, <laughs> I don't, like, to me, you're either, I, what you're doing for a living mm-hmm. is not, I mean, I either support you as my friend right. or I don't support you as my friend. And you're going to be invited to the same thing as anybody else in my life is right. going to be invited to. And it's not, a, it's not a, you're not, it's not a toy. It's not a trick. It's not a party story. This I mean, is a human being, real people doing real, honest, mm-hmm. honorable work. Yeah. You might be one of the 10 people who think that way. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I you're just, like one in point yeah. zero 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 yeah. one percent. I don't. I, you wear I'm this in, shirt around and that's the name yeah. of your book. Do you yes. feel like you get judged based on the name of your book because people think it's going to be one thing and it's completely not that at all? Well, you know, it's a conversation starter. Yeah. And I think anything that gets people talking is a good thing. Yeah. So if my shirt is a prompt yeah. to open up a conversation, I'm totally okay with that. Yeah. And another thing is, you know, the, the, the porn industry plays into my book in a way that's not what you'd think. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's oh, a, it, absolutely there, does. It, 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 it factors into my story, mm-hmm. but not in, not in what, pe- in a way that people imagine. Yeah. But my feeling is, and you know, there have been many great people in the porn industry who have supported this book, who have helped me, you know, with my marketing campaigns for the book. And one thing that everybody has said is that if that helps bring people to this story and yeah. it opens a conversation, then it's great. Like if you come because you want, if you come for the salacious parts, but you stay because there's some quality, valuable material or something that's enlightening to you, right. then we did our jobs. Yeah. No, I agree. And see, when you said you meet people, you don't say that immediately. I usually do, unless I'm just like, I am in an Uber and I really don't want to talk to them anyway, and I see the cross hanging from their rearview mirror, and then I'm just like, I don't even entertain those subjects. See, that would be, the, that would be at the moment that I would yeah. say it. <laughs> but, but I in say In fact, I'd probably open my leg and say, I do porn. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how I introduce myself. Most of the, you know, people are like, oh, what do you do for a living? And I, I always open with, well, I'm a stand-up comedian because that is a icebreaker for them. I go, I'm a stand-up comedian. They go, oh, that's so cool. I go, oh, and a porn actress. And they're like, oh. Uh. And they either don't know how to talk to me yeah. and they just turn away. Or, like you said, they have a million questions and now all they want to talk about is porn, which is fine because I'm willing to talk about it at all times. I want to talk about it and have the open conversation. Because there's, sh- there's no shame in what you're doing and it correct. should not be positioned that yeah. way for anybody. I went recently, I had done a photo shoot and there was a porn star in the in the photo shoot and during during the session we were talking about a show that was coming up in LA and I said and he and he expressed interest and I was like, Well you should come. My friends and I are going on such and such. So I got him a ticket and he came with us and I didn't frame anything for anybody. I don't know. I mean some of the friends who were with us were gay, some were not. I didn't know who'd seen his work and who hadn't seen his work. It wasn't my job to have to. I don't tell all my friends what everybody does for a living yeah, no. ahead of time, and I wasn't going to put him in that position. And I figured he would handle it mm-hmm. the way he wanted to. And somebody said, "So what do you do?" And he said, "I'm a porn actor." Oh, wow. And it was it was such a non issue. Oh, that's so great. And I think you know he felt good about that, and I felt good to see that I had people around me that were who like were that. not being judgmental right Mm -hmm. that's great you know who were just like oh you know it's a very matter of course yeah I like to talk about it because I like I 
think, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, except for when I read, oh, I, I sound will. intelligent. I'll correct you if you're wrong. I don't sound intelligent <laughs> when I read, but other than that, uh, <laughs> just in general, it comes out very well. Uh, so I like to tell people, you know, like I educated, I have a college education. I, granted, I don't have like the highest college education. I don't have a master's or anything, but I do have a college education. I worked in medicine for nearly a decade before I got into comedy and pornography. And it wasn't a tragic story. It wasn't like I had no other way out. I had nothing better, you know, no other, I extended all of my, you know, options. No, I wanted to do this. It was something that was a, initially just a fast way to make money, but then I grew into loving it. Mm -hmm. And I love the people that I work with and I love the personalities that I get to meet. Not all of them. Um, (laughs) Not everyone's a winner. Right. (laughs) But for the most part, I idolize a lot of people in our industry. I idolize people like Jackie. I idolize people like Alexis Fox. I idolize people like um, Kendra Lust. These people who are doing amazing things with their careers and are like really giving back and being just good, wholesome people who happen to work in sex. Because everyone thinks that the moment you work in sex, you can't possibly have ethics or morals yeah, or values. Yeah, but you know what? We said this before where I said, you know, people jerk off with one hand and point a finger yeah, with correct. the other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it's... It's always the people who have the most to say who are probably enjoying your work deviant. more than anyone yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. else. And I don't even like to say deviant because I don't think it's there's anything wrong. deviant about I think it's about deviant it. when you are judging, though, and or maybe deviant's not the right word. Uh, deceptive, I guess, is the better word. Uh, you know, you're masking and hiding uh, desire yeah. or what you're watching. You, you know what right, I mean? It's like right, those people right. are so secretive, and I think that's there's something really weird about that. But it's probably mm-hmm. how they grew up. You know, yeah. in my guess is like we're sort of conditioned like our attitudes towards sex and sexuality I think we're, Come from we learn them oh yeah how did you how were you raised yeah. about sexuality were well you? I was Catholic so it was oh. you know but I will say and this is gonna sound so stupid but like so my parents even after I lost my virginity which was I was 18 so I was you know I think back then like that was a normal age yeah. to lose your yeah. it wasn't late um, not as late as you, yeah. uh, <laughs> but but that's normal. But I mean, it now, normal. I mean, most now it's thirteen, high twelve, school, they're like, crazy. Uh, they're like, yes, yes. But I, the thing that I, I think I feel so lucky. A little young. Well, it is, but well, it's happening. It's it's really? happening. Yes, there's bl- at least blowjobs are happening at eleven. Yes, I'm like sitting there thinking to myself, like I masturbated at a really young age, but I didn't really know. I didn't. I couldn't frame what that was. I just knew it mm. felt good. I wasn't like thinking about a penis inside me at age mm. five, but I was masturbating but Mm. one of the things that I feel lucky about is that I grew up before the internet and access to porn because for me sex was this is so sad but hey it's a it's a perfect sequitur it it, I watch soap operas Mm -hmm. and in soap operas Mm -hmm. back then in the 90s late 80s 90s Mm -hmm. you would have a couple that wouldn't fuck for like a year and a half right you know you would be waiting and really because we had to draw it out you had to draw it out we had to draw it out because it's a daily show so you couldn't once you once you'd like did the deed it kind of it ends it then they have to break up then they have to break you have to break them up yeah so it's like we would we would drag that out as long as we could I I waited a year and a half for Bo and Carly on Days of Our Lives to have sex a year and a half I'm not not kidding and that's how long it took them because something always happened you know she fell down an elevator shaft or whatever but it was such a big deal when they did and so that was kind of and it's still how I live my life now where it's you know like, they were probably really were off camera no there was so much drama yeah because oh, I the show I was on oh please they there were? were people oh, left sure. and right <laughs> but see why okay and now I'm intrigued about this because this is something I didn't know why would they have to break up when they had sex why couldn't there be like long because relationships? it's not interesting because the, anymore. it's not compelling TV conflict is compelling TV and what you'll see is in all television even with unscripted reality shows it's all conflict driven yeah like what you're you, right. even on a talk show mm-hmm. you know it's always from the perspective of you know conflict is what makes people invested watch. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and so the minute the couple's happy mm-hmm. it's, it's like there's no drama Right. I mean, unless you have, like, I mean, on the soap, sometimes what they'll do is, like, there will be, like, in mine, they had sex, and then, oh, she fell down the elevator shaft after the sex, but then he was, like, dying of a disease, and she had to find the cure, so there was, like, all these other Well, they'll sometimes then make that couple, like, sometimes they'll have, you know, it'll come to some kind of boil, and then they'll put that couple on the back burner for five Mm -hmm. minutes, Mm -hmm. and they'll focus on something else, and then when they bring them back, there's trouble in paradise. Interesting. Because the trouble is what people want. Yeah. You know, it's like the you you want the drama. The drama. Mm, interesting. Mm. See, I just thought that was how I grew up because my parents were like a live soap opera. They were like 
divorced when I was two and then back together when I was five and they dated until I was like eight and then they broke up again. I watched my mom get arrested in my front lawn. It was oh my torture. God. They were awful to each other. Wow. Um, but that's, I never knew what a healthy relationship was. To me, a healthy relationship was, was how far can I throw you before you'll, you, you keep coming back? Like, oh, wow. you know, that yeah. was my thing. So Right. So we see that's exactly, you like you make exactly the point. It's like, I think our attitudes toward sex, toward relationships are what we learn. Those mm -hmm. are not things that are, those aren't, you know, that's the nurture, not the nature. But you had a healthy relationship to look up to. You had a healthy. Yeah. My parents have been married 52 years. Yeah. I mean, um, yes. But you but didn't know what a healthy relationship was either. No, not on not on a personal level. Do no. you think that was because you were between two? You were trying to have a relationship between a man, two men. Well, I think it's because I never knew how to connect with somebody on that level because mm -hmm. I didn't ever have the high school relationship. The, mm -hmm. the I never went. I mean, the first time I went through a breakup was. I was 33 30 or, or 31. Uh, it was like the first time it, what it felt like to, mm. you know. So. And we all went through that at 16, 17. You right. Know? So, so I'm navigating so that as, you know, I was very mature in terms of my professional life, mm. but I mm. couldn't have been more underdeveloped in terms of a, of a human Personal. being underneath it. Wow. So I sort of had to catch up. Yeah. You know, so, you know, look, it's, that's life. You know, we yeah. all have a different story and you get through it one way or another. And that's why things like this are important yeah. because we can have conversations and realize that we're all not alone. Like you went yeah. through what you went through. You had your, you know, you had your stuff. It, like we all, but yet there's a way to still be healthy and, yeah. and be successful. And move on with your and life. Move on yeah. And not let it be the thing that drags you down and use it as, you know, an asset. Yeah, no, I agree. We're going to take a quick break, you guys, and we're going to come right back and we're going to talk sex. Oh. This is Sexy Funny Raw, the podcast with me, adult film star and comedian Sylvia Sage, here to discuss what you've only dared to ask Google. Undress, unzip, and unwind. The party starts now. Welcome back, guys. All right, now we're gonna dive into some things because let's dive. Jackie, when we Deep. first got in, I said I'm gonna ask you some real questions. I'm gonna ask like, what was the last thing that you like Googled sexually, <laughs> and if it was like embarrassing or just something that you wanted to know about sex or sexuality that you learned recently. Well, I mean, I don't actually Google that much in terms of about sex, but I will say one of the things, and it's not on Google, I look on X videos for a lot, and you're going to now after you hear me say this, is meth blowjobs. I've heard this from um, Jackie before. Yeah. I don't know about this. <laughs> meth blowjobs is fascinating to me. So, you know, but you and I have talked a lot about amateur porn because right. I don't really watch a lot of uh, regular porn now. I don't want to say regular, but we mainstream know the people. porn. I know everyone. It's awkward to watch your friends. It is. I yeah. mean, I've still diddled myself to people I know, but yeah. um, <laughs> sorry, Sylvia. <laughs> I hope it's me. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to be so pissed <laughs> yeah. if you have not orgasmed to me. <laughs> right? It's um, the <laughs> ultimate insult. It is. Right? <laughs> it was never useful. No, yeah. um, no, I, I actually don't really. But it, so I like. Um, I go through phases. So sometimes I'll be watching a lot of like mainstream movies, and just the sexual tension will get me off. Hmm. But uh, it, within with regards to porn, I think meth blowjob is fascinating to me because it is so raw and real, and it's just people in their wherever like there's a guy who owns this site called foul foul every time she talks oh, about sorry. this i like can't no, no, even you it. you are going to oh, wait it. so this is a site that has content okay so there is a site called foul foul i can't remember if it's f-o-u-l f-o-w-l or those are switched one of them is you know okay. it's but it's it's so basically ugly and chickens chicken. yeah, basically yeah. but it's yeah literally women he found in a dumpster like getting food and he uh like they're pretty girls which we do where the girls are beautiful and they're wearing lingerie like these women are literally wearing the granny panties that they probably had on a week but anyways it's fascinating to me to watch this stuff because it is it's real whereas i know what i'm doing isn't real so i know when this guy finds the hooker on the side of the road and gives her five dollars for a blowjob yeah that it's 
that's real. Like, this is not scripted. Like, this guy, I, I and they don't test clearly. I mean, yeah. <laughs> right, but that, that feels exploitive to me. Oh, it absolutely 100% is. And I'm not really watching it to get, I mean, to get off. It's just right. more, um, it's. And it, by the way, there's no judgment. Though. Oh, no. Who am I, I wasn't not to feeling, judge? No, no, I wasn't feeling judgment. <laughs> but I think it's, it's just fascinating to see. I don't want to say how the other half lives, but how somebody lives that I would never exist right. in that world or in that mm-hmm. life. And it's, you know, this is a glimpse at it. And it's, it's fascination it's, for you. It is so fascinating to me and disturbing yeah. at that the is, same time. That I love is it. Foul, foul. And meth blowjobs is what exactly? So it's usually people smoking meth or, or um, giving a blowjob so they can have money for meth. See, I couldn't even okay. watch something like that because oh. as a ex-meth addict like I can't even be like around I can't see it like I don't want anything to do with Mm -hmm. it like it just makes me cringe cringe or would you be tempted no cringe okay I have no temptation left it's just a physical like cringe because I just remember like how I felt in that time and Mm -hmm. like how dirty I would feel and just like not good I was hiding from everything and everyone in my world it was just awful Right. Yeah, I don't and think these people are happy. And plus, no, once definitely. you get yourself to a place like now where you're like in a good place in your life, yeah, you know who you you uh, you know you who would go back? You right, don't, you don't want to revisit. Wanna, you don't want to revisit that yeah. time. Yeah, I honestly, I talk about myself as the person in my twenties, like a totally different individual. Like I didn't mm-hmm. even. Not that I didn't know that person because I did, but it's certainly not the person I am now. And I don't relate to that person any longer. It was definitely, I just, I view it with like a, like a, like I'm looking through a glass and I'm like, oh, let me tell you what she did here. So when she was this age, she did this. Right, but that's sort of like what the book is like, is like, I don't even see that as me. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. See, I love that. Like when people talk to me about it, they say, how could you talk, how could you, don't you feel embarrassed? I'm like, Mm. I, I don't. Yeah, because I, I don't relate. Me. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, but. I get that. Uh, so we are going to have, I have a few questions from listeners, um, and I really like this one um, because Stephen asked, what age should we start talking about the realities of sex with youth? And how much is too much? I think that's a great question. What do you think, Jackie? Well, I mean, I don't know if anybody's seen the show Euphoria, but it actually like split my heart into like a thousand pieces. But I I think, you know, talking about sex as early, I mean, I I don't really have a framework because I don't have children, Mm -hmm. but I think as, as, you know, at least when they're in junior high, you should be talking about porn because they're probably looking at it it Mm -hmm. and, 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 and talking openly with them about it. I mean, sex education is something we don't do in this country well, and now sex education needs to involve discussions of porn yeah. and that's not happening at all and a lot of parents are afraid to talk about it but if you're going to have a fucking child mm. then you should fucking put on yeah. your big boy pants and be a fucking parent and yeah. talk to them about porn I agree because it's a real issue yeah really terrifying issue no I absolutely agree is that something that they cover in that show the porn yeah I mean they talk about the repercussions of like you know that these boys are watching porn and thinking that every girl should deep throat or throwing yeah. them around and yeah. fucking them really Got hard it. yeah. is like what a girl really once yeah. and, and I'm sure there's plenty there of women are that some like girls. that. Yeah. Yes, but you know, it's there's no dialogue of like how do you like to be fucked? It's just throw her down and fuck her really hard and mm-hmm. it's like and bring your buddies in and have them fuck her really yeah. hard too. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Cuz I do those porns, but it's necessarily not what I prefer, you know? Like right. if I were saying for sure what I absolutely like, I love the buy stuff I've been doing recently where Ooh. it's me and another dude fucking another dude like Hot. I'm into it. <laughs> I love it so much, but because there's like, there's no weirdness like there because I feel like even in DP scenes double penetration scenes where someone's in my vagina and my butt at the same time I even feel like there's a weirdness between the guys that they don't yeah. want their legs to touch or yep. like they, a, their balls know, can't like, touch don't look no. at me you know like so that type of thing so the that you're doing are for the, are there specific by um, sites or films or is yeah. it for specific gay specific by sites mm-hmm. the, it is. yeah and it's usually it's usually like an like an orgy type of deal because mm-hmm. it's always usually like a two guys and a girl or like a two guys two girls that type of scenario because i know you did one like, not that i yeah. <laughs> watch any of it you should <laughs> um i know you did one for men.com yeah 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 but with was, men.com i'm not actually having sex i'm usually just an extra for men.com i you do were in a scene oh I saw, it was why not buy in a scene that was for why not buy I'm men.com per- i think maybe owns it oh okay because i thought i saw a scene on men.com that you were in Mm. Usually for them, I'm just an extra. Got it. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I you agree. You were very extra in this one. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think we need to start talking to kids about sex at a super young age. I think that the moment they start asking questions, we need to be honest with them. Instead of giving them these stupid things like the stork comes down and delivers a baby to mommy's tummy. <laughs> be honest with them. Right. Tell them exactly what happens. They won't have a, a way to accept that. They won't maybe understand what's going on, but be honest with them right away because why are we lying to them and then telling them later that this is what it is? You know, it's right. so crazy. I think if you tell a teenager that like a watermelon's gonna come out of your cooch, that right. like less women would get pregnant. Right. Exactly. Okay, let's just be fucking honest. Or here. somebody might be parched on a summer day and want to think they're gonna get a watermelon. No, I agree. We need to be having these conversations. <coughs> And that's why I'm so glad that we've had um, one of my favorite people on the show today, Jackie St. James. Thank you so much for coming in. I really appreciate it and talking sex with us. And thank you so much, Josh. You've been an incredible co-host. My pleasure. I would love to have you back anytime. I I will be here anytime. You just have to make the call. I will be making calls. And I can't wait to have your mom and your dad on a porn set. Oh, we're coming. We're coming. We're going to schedule that right now. We need to have the coverage of it. Yeah, I'm down. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode. We'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Sexy Funny Raw. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Sexy Funny Raw. Watch and listen to all of our episodes at SexyFunnyRaw.com. Making the airwaves sexy one show at a time. Until next time, stay sexy.